just want to start off with Newcastle. I actually think teams are not going to want to have Newcastle in their group. I know the English teams get to skip out, but we, you're looking at like the PSGs, the Real Madrids, Barcelona, uh, Bayern Munich. I think Newcastle will be one of those teams, especially being in pot four as well, where you look at it and it's like, damn, I actually don't want them. You know what I mean? I know they're inexperienced. I know it's their first time in uh, in a long time. But going away to St. James's Park on a European night, those Geordies are going to make it absolute hell for any team coming into that stadium. So I believe that will give them a massive boost. I think they will, they will do well. I think they'll surprise people. Round of 16 is possible. It is. We, we, we've, we've everything surrounding the club, the new owners, the Eddie Howe and the players. I think they're, they're in for something special this year. They could be. We'll put the, the pots up on the screen here. So as everyone can see, Newcastle are in pot four. And look, they're going to have some big teams in their group. It is inevitable that that is going to happen. You know, other than Man City, they could they can get anybody. You know, they can get Sevilla. Probably wouldn't be the worst idea for them. Final there as well. But Napoli, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Paris Saint-Germain, Benfica. They then have pot two, which Real Madrid, Inter, Dortmund, you know, Porto, Atti. And even when you look into pot three with the likes of AC Milan as an example, PSV, some really decent teams, Lazio in that group, in that area as well. But I think Newcastle, depending on their group, will fancy their chances. If, listen, if they get Bayern Munich and Real Madrid and AC Milan, then maybe the circumstance is different. But if they end up with a group, when you look at these pots, if they end up with Benfica, RB, maybe Copenhagen, Newcastle have got a chance of getting out of that group. 110%, in my personal opinion, they've got a chance of getting out of that group stage. How this impacts their... Premier League season remains to be seen. There's a lot of people predicting that the Geordies will essentially crumble with having to play two games per week. What's really interesting is this debate's happened a lot in the last two seasons where fans, and it was a lot of fans like Igao actually, who brought this to the fore. Arsenal will make top four two years ago because we're playing one game a week. Towards the end of that season, the same fans, including Igao, were saying one game a week has kind of rest their rhythm up. A lot of footballers have spoken about it. Two games a week, they feel keeps them sharper than one game per week. So this is a really interesting year for Man United, who we'll get on to, of course. Arsenal as well, for the first time in, I want to say it's six years, it might even be seven, since they've been in the Champions League. And for Newcastle, where there's going to be big chunks of the season where they will be playing two highly competitive games twice a week we will really see whether that weakens a team or whether it sharpens them mm-hmm. so i think we're going to get answered there's three teams really that are going into this not in for many United, we've been in the champions league a few times in the last four or five years but all three teams at the same time going back into this scenario let's see if they get better or if they regress i think it's a real big acid test yeah. to those theories that are flying around and that, that theory, I've always said that theory is pretty much nonsense, the whole, well, because we've got one game a week, we've got a better chance of getting Champions League because I think before Newcastle, the last team to get Champions League football without being in any kind of Europe beforehand was, I think, Leicester when they won the league. Before mm. that, like during that period, I don't remember any team that's not been in Europe to then get Champions League. So to Newcastle do this is a big achievement. Yeah. They've got, to be fair, they're in a win-win situation. They've got three scenarios. They get absolutely hammered and they just go out. Well, they can then just focus on the league, try and focus on a cup like an FA Cup or something or the uh, Carabao Cup. Cool. And then focus on trying to get as high as possible in the league. They do okay and end up third in the Europa League. And you know what? Again, I think that would have been their perfect level for them last season, but they overachieved in the Champions League. But they end up in the Europa mm-hmm. League. They've got a good chance of winning that. That they do like New- uh, Liverpool are in there, and they got some decent teams in there. But you would fan you've seen them over the last season, you would fancy them to potentially go win the Europa League. And then, if they do really well, they're through to the next round of the Champions League, which they haven't done in how mm-hmm. long. So, this is a win win for Newcastle, no matter what happens. Yeah, it'll yeah. be a bit embarrassing if they get slapped yeah. up, but they haven't been there for years, man. Literally, it's a free hit. You're right, and Newcastle are in a position whereby. They're so far ahead of the schedule. They were a team in relegation when Piff took over. 
a team in relegation with Eddie Howe came in, a team that was on its way out of the Premier League. You fast forward 18, 19, 20 months or so, 380 to 400 million pound of investment, and they're a Champions League team. The fact they're being written off, like they won't do nothing. It's, it's almost for me, it's a fair analysis now, but it's almost people trying to bury their head in the sand for what's coming from this Newcastle team. They will progress. They will become a regular Champions League team, in my opinion, in the coming years. And look, are they going to win the Champions League this year? Not in my opinion. I know they. I always say nothing's impossible. I don't think they're ready to be able to do that yet. But this notion of just completely writing them off, acting as though they are just going to go out the group stage with a whimper, uh, not perform, not deliver, I think is wrong. The English teams are very strong indeed. Just look at Europe in the last few years. We haven't won every European competition, but including the Conference League, Europa League, and the Champions League. Look how many finalists we've had in the last four or five years. So many. The English clubs are strong, and in my opinion, we are only going to collectively continue uh, to get stronger. Uh, this here from Craig Lee says, nobody in pot one or two wants Newcastle. Oh, no, they want to avoid it. You, you, and this is, this is, Craig, you are spot on. When you look at those pots again, let me put them up on the screen here. When you look at, they want, if you look at all the teams in pot four, Newcastle were the team that everybody wants to avoid the most. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got, you know, Ross Sociedad in there. I listen, t- trust me, young boys and Celtic are the two teams everybody wants. They're the whipping boys. And uh, uh, Antwerp in there as well. The, uh, yeah, the you've, got Antwerp in, you've got Antwerp in there. Interesting, U- Union Berlin, you know, are making, are making their uh, Champions League debut i believe mm-hmm. i read that earlier on today yeah, so you've got union berlin that. who who make you know a bit of an unknown entity in that regard we haven't seen him in the champions league before but i look at it and think you know celtic you know they're not much cop ren same thing i mean they don't even have ren don't even have a, a ua for coefficient ranking uh it, it's crazy nor the newcastle because they've been out so long but the story of newcastle that, that's lens terry by the way Sorry, that's RC Lens in the group, not Rens. Rens are a different team. Lens, sorry, sorry, sorry. My yeah, my, yeah, pizza, my, my apologies. Misread that. So yeah, look, nobody wants Newcastle, one hundred percent. Now the next team I want to ask you about, the next team I want to ask you about, and we'll do it in terms of where they finished in the Premier League last year. To be fair, our club, Manchester United. How do you see this Champions League campaign with Eric Ten Hag going? I see it going how it's gone for the last how many different seasons we've been in the Champions League. It's always been difficult. Um, we've never really gone into a Champions League season in the, in the last few years where we feel like, yep, easy, easy get through the group stage and we, we'll be confident. There's always been a hiccup here and there. There's always been games that we get surprised by, like Young Boys for one, um, from, from uh, two seasons ago. We are so inconsistent in the Champions League. We'll have moments like um, Juve away, that 2 1 with Jose. We'll have moments like that. And then we'll have moments like Young Boys. We'll have moments like Pashitas. Um, no, not Pashitas, sorry. No, Istanbul, it, it, sorry. Istanbul, the team in yeah, Istanbul. Istanbul name, but yeah. It's just how bad it is. I've even forgot their name. I've even forgot <laughs> their name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so so I, I, I don't see it changing anywhere. Uh, anyway. um, I think we'll need to really dig deep as a team in this Champions League. I don't think any team is an is a given per se. Like if we get, yo, listen, if we get Celtic, of course I'm going to be confident going there and being able to uh, go in there and be able to, to do a job. But we can't take anything for granted right now. Like we're in a position where our team is not complete. The the system is tweaking. The Ten Hag already under scrutiny. New signings already under scrutiny. And going into this Champions League, if we underperform in any way, shape or form, it could just hinder the confidence so, mm. so much um, for, the, for the season to come. So, so yeah, if ours is, I think ours is the stickiest. Our all four English teams, I think we have the most pressure and I think we have the most um, inconsistency in us um, to actually just... We could either drop into the uh, Europa League or we could go on and get into the round of 16 easily. Like, that's just that's just what we are right now in the Champions League. Um, I'm not fully yeah. confident. I mean, listen, there's, there's a lot of pressure on Ten Hag. I see, you know, rival fans telling us he's Oli 2.0, which is incorrect because he's won the trophy. But I hear you. There's some that say that they think he's a fraud. This is a man who a year ago, over a year ago, let's say from about March 
2022 backwards, everybody rated. City were eyeing him up as a rep- long-term replacement to Pep. And look, I, I think that he gets... I think he gets a raw deal sometimes. The, Of course, the expectations on a Man United manager is higher than any other manager in the league. We're the biggest team and we're everybody's rival. So our fans demand a lot and rivals. They said Man United could win a treble and they would criticize us. It, it, it's the way it goes. But when I'm being fair and objective, I'm I'm not worried about the group stages per se. You know, again, if you look at the the possible possible opponents, because we're in pot two, you know, there's there is the possibility for a mammoth game, you know, a Barcelona a Bayern Munich, a PSG. You could also pick up Benfica or you could get Feyenoord. I'm not too worried. Sevilla, listen, they knocked us out last year. I wouldn't mind a little bit of a... uh, The last team that knocked us out of the Europa League that we then faced the following season in the Champions League was Villarreal, and we we did well against them. So for me, I think we'll get through the group stages. It's a really hard one to judge because so far this season, we haven't seen much progression at all from Man United. We, We actually play quite well against Forest after we conceded those two goals, but you can't ignore them. And the first two games really and truly were atrocious. So right now, confidence is is riding quite low. But come the end of this weekend, there could be a completely different feeling about Man United. If we go and beat Arsenal, suddenly people go, oh, what what are United cooking this year? Again, we get battered by Arsenal, and suddenly that, that lack of confidence is compounded further. I think Man United this year, though, I think we can make the quarterfinals. I really do. And, 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 you know, the last Champions League campaign was the strangest one we had that season under Oli because we, we scraped through the, the, the group stages. And then the game against Atty was the weirdest game ever where we really shouldn't have gone out. They weren't very good and we couldn't do anything. The team was disjointed. A year, the year before that, going out in the group stages, especially after we started it by winning in Paris, was so frustrating. Mm-hmm. So I know there's a lot of JD Man United fans, but I do believe we'll make it out of the groups and I think we can make it to a quarter final. The signing of Amrabat, getting that over the line in the next few days is going to be absolutely imperative to Manchester United because we need that extra steal in midfield. We've got Champions League winners in the likes of Casemiro and Varane in our team, Champions League finalists with the likes of Onana. But bringing in Amrabat is going to be key. European experience, big World Cup experience, big tournament experience is going to be key. And the player I'm looking forward to seeing the most in the Champions League, two of them, actually. Marcus Rashford, who's got a decent record in Champions League, and Erasmus Hoyland. I know he's not kicked a ball for us yet, but I'm very, very excited about watching this kid play for Man United under the floodlights, Champions League nights. I've got a real good feeling about this kid. So... The reason I'm not going to completely write us off at this point is because we've still got two or three players to come into this first team, then gel them together. And I think there's more levels to come from this team. I don't believe, at this point, I don't believe that Ten Hag is this fraud that mm-hmm. some Man United fans and a lot of rival fans are calling him out to be. This time last year, we were saying exactly the same thing. Uh, that made me... I'm muting it. That made me jump. I didn't know what that oh, was. It, it came on. <laughs> and it, is. it literally made me jump. But yeah, so, you know, this time yeah, last year, everyone was writing Man United off and I'm not going to, I'm not going to panic and do that at this point. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I say it's going to be tough and it's going to be a, a, a kind of a jaded group stage, but that doesn't mean I don't believe we'll go through. Like, I believe we'll go through and I believe we, again, quarterfinals is something that is achievable for Man United. We've seen it um, even last season against Barcelona. Many fans, rival fans, even Man, uh, Man United fans themselves, we saw Barcelona and we thought, ah, crap, like, th- this is us going out. But we, we overcame, so we overcome. So we have got the ability to overcome hard tyres. It's just the consistency going forward. But I, I believe we can get through. Round of 16 is what I expect. Quarterfinals is what we should be getting. And anything beyond that is overachieving, uh, in my opinion, with the, with the team and the place that we're at. So... So yeah, man, let's let's flip in goal, baby. And, and what I'm liking in the comments is a lot of people saying what I expected. Terry's deluded. There's no way you'll get into the quarterfinals. They will be the same people if we do get to the quarterfinals or if we got to a semi-final. And I said, oh wow, we've overachieved, would say, but you should be there. Maybe based on the money we spent, we should be. But if you don't think our squad's good, like viewers, where do you believe Man United are going to end up in this Champions League? Let us know now in the comments section. Of course, people, by the way, smash this like button. Let's get past 2,000 likes 
while we are live. What's the actual poll saying right now on that? Most people think, we 43% think we're going to get to 2,000 likes. So let's make sure we get that done. 